Hello everyone, few days ago I made a vote asking you guys for help to decide which video should I make next and the winning of this vote is building AI agent in JavaScript and this is gonna be the video for today. In this video we will cover the following topics, installing and setting up everything needed to get an agent up and running in Nikis.js, creating an agent using language chain, connecting this agent to the web, and building custom agent tools, and how to use these tools effectively. Also we're gonna explain what is LangGraph and how it works, and creating an agent with LangGraph that has a memory, connecting the LangGraph agent to tools, and understanding what makes LangGraph agent better, and also explaining nodes and edges in LangGraph, and finally, testing our agents. I'm gonna be using Nix.js as the main web framework for this video, and I'm gonna select new TypeScript, yes, for everything except the CRC directory. And yes, I'm using a browser. Let NXGS download and do its thing. And after that, open Visual Studio Code inside your project that you created. Inside the Visual Studio Code terminal, I want you to install this couple of library that will be essential to run our agents. The first thing that we need to install is .env so we can connect the environment keys that we have in the .env file to our project automatically. The second thing we need Langshin community and LangChain core, and of course, LangChain itself. Additionally, we're going to use any large language model library. We have a lot of them, like OpenAI and Fireworks and Anthropica. In my case, I'm using Google Generative AI, which is easy to use, and it's also give you a free API key, so you can test the agent. And also we're going to need, you're also gonna need LangGraph to build an advanced agent with tools and finally we go into require zod which is a schema validation library with a static type inference it's made for typescript but also you can use it in javascript it's very powerful for all almost abis the next step is getting the abi keys that we will need to run these agents the first thing that we go into require an abi key for the ai model that we will run in my case, I'm using Gemini 1.5 Pro, which requires Google ABI key. To get your ABI key for Gemini, go to aistudio.google.com slash app slash ABI key, and there you can get your ABI key. We are also going to require some ABI that will search the web for us, and the best current ABI for that is Tivoli AI, which is already optimized for large language model and building Rags application. So it's perfect for building agents. You can create your account for free and it gives you about 1000 requests per month. So we can test our agent without being anything. Get your ABI key from the overview and you will find it inside the ABI keys box over here. You can copy it or create one from there. With that done, we can start creating our first agent using LangChain. And now for creating our first agent inside the F folder create another folder called ABI and inside it I want you to create two folder one called agent and one called the graph the graph one will be for language graph agent and the agent one will be for the simple language chain agent that we're going to build right now inside the agent folder I want you to create a file called route.js and here we're going to build our first agent there is a few stuff that we need to import to make our agent work the first thing that we need is a tool and of course Zod, the generative AI that we're going to use. In our case, it's Google Generative AI and a shared prompt template. We're going to create a prompt template to run this agent. We're going to call a function called create tool calling agent. It's an, an agent that can call tools. And I think creating agent without tools is incredibly useless. The power of agents come from the ability to call the tools that you give it and also agent executor and also we're going to need next response so we can send the output from the large language model and the agent to the front end or the ABI and Tivoli search results. Get .env from .env 
then we're going to initialize it. This is how we're going to give all the ABI keys that we created automatically to the code that we'll create. Then create an async function called get. It will going to create for an automatically get ABI point in next. In your case, you probably want to create a post method instead of get, but for this sake of tutorial, I'm going to create a get ABI point. Then create try and catch block and make sure to console log the error and send the message in the ABI. Then create the first tool that we're going to use is search, which is using Tivoli search results. You can give it the max result that you want to use. Basically, how many results do you want it to be returned from the Tivoli search ABI? You can put it over here. You can put the search inside tools array and we're going to pass this to the agent. After that, you're going to create the large language model that you want to use. In my case, I'm using the generative AI Google Gemini Pro model. And you can change the max output token over here. In order to our agent understand what is required from it, it needs some guidance. And the prompt, it's basically the guidance of this large language model to act as an agent. Here you give it inside the system what you want it to act as and what you want it to do. Maybe you want it to return the response in a certain language or basically act as a certain role that you want. Here I ask it to be a simple, helpful assistant that answer the following questions as the best as it can. And you have access to the following tools, which I'm going to give it to the agent also is this array of tools. And now you can create the agent using the create tool calling agent and we give it the large language model, the tools, the guiding prompt over here. But in order to make it work, we have to create an agent executor. We give it the agent that we created over here and the tools that we have above. And after that, we are ready right now to use our agent that we created. In order to make the agent work, we have to invoke the agent executor that we created above. And I give it a simple question here. What is the weather in Cairo? Large language model usually doesn't have access to weather. So using Tivoli search will solve this issue. And I'm returning the results in the ABI. Let's see it in action. So head for the ABI agent, ABI that we have. And here you can see it return an input. What is the weather in Cairo, which is our questions or query. And the output, the weather in Cairo is sunny with temperature of 32 degrees Celsius or 90.1 degrees in Fahrenheit, which is correct. It's a little bit hot today in Cairo. And with that, you have an assemble language sheen agent that's up and running without any issues. You can add more tools. Here, if you wanted to, I'm going to show you also how you can create a custom tools. In order to create a custom tool, you have to use the tool function that we imported above. I take a function for whatever what you wanted to do or process the logic. Maybe you wanted to connect it to another API or create a simple logical function like here that I want, the, the one that I have right here. I take the input and add on top of it too and return it. You need to add another few information, like what is the name of this tool and what it do and using Zod to validate the schema. Basically here, the input must be a number. You can add it to the tool array over here. And right now we have access to this custom tool that we created. And you can call this function easily by asking it to use it. Actually here, the name of this tool is magic function and we pass for it the input is three. And I ask it what is the value of the magic function three, and it should return five. Here, the, the ABI point response was the correct number, actually. It's the value of magic function, and I guess it's three, is five. This is how you can call a custom tool that you have. You can create, you can create anything inside these tools if you want to. Now we created the language sheen agent. What about with the more advanced graph agent? LangueGraph was created to be a stateful multi-actor application with large language model and you can use it to create an agent or multi-agent workflow. And it's built on top of language chain. It's not something completely separated, easily to get integrated with language chain app easily. But since it's a separation of creation of agents, it requires from you a little bit more code to 
create an agent. Now inside your graph folder, create a new file called route.js and also we're going to import the necessary library that we need. Once more, we're starting by importing what we need, the tools, the human message, Zod, the generative AI, once again, table, search results, the state graph, because we are gonna create state for this agent, memory receiver to save the messages, the tool node to connect the tools to a large language model, and finally the next response, and once again, .env. And again, initialize .env so we can call our ABI keys automatically. And once again, I'm creating an async function get to create an ABI point, and a try catch a block to send the error in case if anything went wrong. What make this agent better is it have a graph state. The graph state is like a blueprint for storing and updating information or our state of the agent during the process of the agent itself. The second thing is storing all the messages. Here, storing all the conversation or the message that we're going to send to the agent itself so it can have a memory of what we did before. Once more, creating a search tool using Tefali search. And in case if you wanted to create a custom tool in this LangGraph agent, it's almost the same way you have to pass a function with some logic inside it and the name of this and the name of this tool and description of what to do and using Zod to validate the input schema for this tool. But I'm not gonna use this wizard tool, it's just an example for how to create one. Then you create an array for the tools that you have and you must create something called tool node. This tool node will be like a container for all the tools that we have and make it available for the agent to be able to use. Then we create the model that we're going to use. I'm using Gemini 1.5 Pro this time. It's a better version of the last model. And I have to bind these tools to this model so it can access it and use it when it's working. Then we have to create a function to check if the agent should stop or not. This function called should continue. Should continue have a simple functionality. It check on the last message from the large language model to see if it wanted to use the tools or not. If it return the tools array in here, it will automatically continue. If it stop and the length of the tools is zero, it will end the agent and give you the final message or the final response. To make it easier to understand, look at this image. When the agent will start from here, it will start using the tools. If it's not found the answer that it want, it will once more using the tools. If it finally got what it wanted, it will not use the tools over here and it will automatically end the agent process and will give you the last message or basically the final answer. And we're gonna create another function called call model. Call model will give the model that we have all the conversation history and messages and return a new message from this model based on the history of the chat that we have. For the next piece of code, to understand what is going on, we have to understand the concept behind LangGraph. Here we have different nodes inside this agent. Nodes are the building blocks for your LangGraph agent. Each node represents a function or a step. You define these steps or the nodes to perform a specific task, like processing input, making decision, or interact with external ABI. Then the node will change the state of this agent, which finally, the last thing that you need to understand is edges. Edges is what connect node to each other, and it defines the flow of our steps and code. LangGraph supports the conditional edges. Here we have two different conditions, and let's see if the if the results for node A got false, it will give us the condition B, and if it's true, it will give us the condition C, which allow us to dynamically determine the next node to execute based on the current state of our graph. Back to our code. Here we have a state graph, have multiple nodes and edges. The first node that we have, we are calling our function called model. As I explained, that node can call function or anything that you want. And the second one is calling the tool node that we created, the container of our tools. Then we have an edge. This is a simple edge, not a conditional edge. 
it start our agent actually but the second agent we have here is a conditional edge this conditional edge calling a function that decide when the agent should stop or not that we created above which is the function should continue and finally if the should continue give us true it will go back to the tools and the agent and continue the flow and it's if return end it will automatically stop the agent and end the process as you can see here it will return end this is what make it a conditional edge it either to continue the loop or stop the agent completely and after that i'm gonna create a check pointer the check pointer will help us to save the conversation state between different runs which it mean the agent process will remember what happened before and finally the app that will run the entire thing for us this is will call the workflow that we have and we will give it the memory saver that we created above and finally we gonna use the entire agent and run it all i have to do right now invoke the app that we created and give it a message and give it a message inside the message array and it will be a human message who is winning the gold olympics in 2024 and after that you give it a configurable thread id the thread id is actually a unique id for this conversation so we can keep track on it and right now we can return the final state response to the api and we can see it together in order to get the final response from the agent we have to get the message to get to the final state messages and inside this final state messages we want to get the final message inside this array and let's see it out in our api and the response that we have is that the united states won the gold medal in the man's four by 400 meter rally in the 2024 Paris Olympics and women's basketball won the gold and women's volleyball won a silver. So it got us answer directly. But if you wanted to see the process of the agent working and give us different response in the background, you have to remove the entire thing and just pass the final state. And now we are done with the Lang graph agent. As you can see, it's much longer to create and it's much powerful than the language chain agent also. You can here create whatever what you want of term of tool. You can connect it to the embedding system and do query on it. Or you maybe wanted to summarize BDFs, maybe create a certain function and logic or connect it to a private API. You can do that inside your tools. Remember that and connect these tools inside your agent and your large language model and your tool node and it can work then by by asking it in the questions to do to use this certain tool but before we end this video i'm gonna leave a link for a vote down there in the description so you can choose which video should i focus on next so that's it gentlemen for this video i hope that you learn about how to build agent in javascript i know it's a little bit challenging in Python. There is also the option of using Lama Index and I'm planning if this video did well on the channel, I'm going to create also another video about building AI agent with Lama Index GS for you guys. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and thank you for watching this video. I hope that you learn from it and see you in the next one.